Hello, today we're really going to be taking a look at the brand new Ubuntu 11.04 Beta 1. Alright, so let's see what's new with this Beta 1. I've been using it for a few minutes now, about a half an hour to an hour, just trying things out and seeing how it performs. I've noticed that in VirtualBox things are still a little bit wonky when it comes to resizing the screen, so I'm going to make an effort not to do that while I'm filming this. Uh, I've noticed things have also slowed down a little bit. For example, if I click on the uh, the Ubuntu launcher icon up here, it takes a little bit longer. Actually, that's faster than it has been for me. It was taking just a little bit longer just a few minutes ago to pull that up, but yeah, that's definitely better than it has been. Anyway, so the launcher looks pretty much the same. However, if you go into the full application launcher, you get a little bit more here. You've got more frequently used applications, new apps you can download. That seems to be different to me. You've got these more results we had before, and in an effort to fix a bug that I mentioned before, or an issue I mentioned before, the scroll wheel now does work, which is awesome. In addition, they've added a lot of stuff to the right-click menu for the launcher. So, for example, if I right-click here, before we had something like this, but with some other items like the uh, files and folders now, you right-click and you get different places you can actually go to. With the applications, you can pick just categories to look through, which, you know, that's definitely a step in the right direction. As before, we can pull these items out and rearrange them as we like, down to a certain extent. We've now got, by default, LibreOffice installed and a couple of their applications on the bar by default. One thing I did forget to mention the last time we looked at it with the Alpha 3 and someone pointed it out to me, I'll put the, uh, the link to their comment here in the video. If you open up any window, and then you drag that window up to the top or to the side, see I'll drag it to the top, everything should go blue, and then when I let go it maximizes the window. That's similar to what you get out of Windows 7 or out of GNOME 3 at this point. If you drag it to one of the sides, you'll see it turns blue, and then it fills half the screen. Opening a second window, if it will do it, there we go. If I drag this one to the side, it should fill the other half of the screen. So that's definitely a step in the right direction in terms of usability, and when you pull it down, you see there it does resize back to normal. One of the other things I found in looking over the release notes, if you hold Control alt and then hit one of the number pad keys, I don't think it actually works with the numbers on the, the home row keyboard, but if you do the number pad keys 1 through 9, it moves to different corners of the screen. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that's definitely something different. Don't know how usable that'll be, but if I hit Control alt 7 that time, it does give you that sort of a grid effect that you can use. I don't know if that's a part of the grid plugin or not. That's the other thing. There have been a lot of things added to Compiz, and I'm still kind of confused as to why they're not including Compiz Config Settings Manager by default, but I've gone ahead and installed it, so if I open up just Compiz Config Settings Manager, there we go. You see here we still have the same stuff we had before. We've got the Ubuntu Unity plugin. We now have a couple of extra changes in here, a couple of extra things we can set under the experimental options. The launcher size can be changed. We can take it down as low as 32, you see that resized that. We can take it up as high as 64 to make it obnoxiously large, or just reset it back to 48. We've got animation, stuff, dash blurring. Not sure about the dash blurring just because I haven't really figured out exactly what it does. If you do know what it does, uh, absolutely let me know in the comment section below. Other than that, looking at the other plugins, the main one that someone mentioned to me is the grid plugin, so let's take a look at that. You see, here we go actually, uh, put center, left, right, top, bottom, yeah, this is pretty much all that stuff I was talking about, control, alt, and a uh, keypad number, so definitely good to, uh, to catch on to that at the same time. Now one of the other big features, one of the big changes with this newer version, of course the uh, Mozilla Firefox, if you maximize it at this point, it should integrate seamlessly yep, into the global menu here at the top now, so it does make it a little bit more seamless experience, very nice. Uh, additionally, if you open up the software center, you are supposed to be able to test drive some applications at this point. I'm not exactly sure which one, but let's give one a try. Abby Word. Let's just see if we can test drive this one before we install it. Does not look like it. However, looking back over at the webupdate.org article, they do mention you have to install a package called QTNX to be able to use it, and there are only certain ones that, are, that it's enabled for. So, uh, without mentioning any specific ones, I'm not exactly sure, but it's nice to see that they're making that effort, that hopefully we will be able to test applications without fully installing them in the long run. Another new, I think new, interesting feature is the Unity Grab Handles. I'm back in the Compass Config Settings Manager again. 
toggle handles is turned off by default, I'm going to go ahead and give it a key combination. We'll say shift uh, F3. Why not? If I can do that. There we go. And now hopefully that'll give me grab handles. Did not work on that one. Let's try it on Firefox. This is something entirely new to me. Oh, look. That actually looks kind of similar to what you'd get on an Android widget. You can resize it however you like with any of these grab handles. Should be very useful for a touch-based device, but uh, I don't know. As far as the desktop interface, I can see it being usable. I don't see it being terribly useful. Let me know what you think about that down below, of course. And of course, one of the key things that Ubuntu is touting with this new release, with this more updated version of 11.04, is full keyboard support, full keyboard navigation support specifically. As we mentioned in the Alpha 3 video, if you hold down the super key, you get these lists of things that you can do with the super key. Additionally, if you hit super key S, it opens up and shows you all of the workspaces you can switch to. If you were to have an application running in one of them, you can drag it between them very easily. And actually, what's kind of cool, kind of interesting, if you drag it over too far, it'll take it over to the next window for you. So, not sure again how useful that's going to be, but it does make it a more seamless experience. Another part of that, and you see I've opened a second Firefox window at this point, if you do the super key and W, it will do the expose, expose kind of thing. Another interesting thing though, if you do that same super key W and you've got something on the second desktop, it pulls everything into one. So again, that's kind of useful. Don't know how useful that's going to be for everybody, but I can see it being useful for some people. So basically, at this point, I've probably missed several things. I just wanted to give you a look and feel and an initial impression of it, let you know how it's working and, and how things are updating. So far, performance has been okay, not great. I'm running this on one core of a very powerful processor, and it does seem to be running a bit slow. It's still running in a virtual machine, of course, but in all of the previous tests, I've done it in a virtual machine, and it has run a whole lot faster than this latest one, so I don't know if it's just me or if it's something else. This is a freshly rebooted system, so... Uh, it is. It does seem to be running a little bit slower to me. I hope they do get this worked out in the next two, three, four weeks before they release. One last thing to mention, of course, they did add in some different community wallpapers, it seems. You see we've got the uh, narwhals there, we've got some more narwhals down here, narwhals all over the place. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, but like I said, that's all for now. Let me know if I missed anything important. I've been looking over the Ubuntu release notes and over a couple of the articles that I've been reading through, and I don't think that I've missed terribly much at this point. So thank you guys so much for watching, though, and I will see you next time.